he, he is a he is not a Muslim. Yeah. He is asking why is Islamic law against um, uh, the TV uh, photograph? The man off screen is Muhammad Wakil. He is a Taliban, one of tens of thousands of religious students who have been pouring into Afghanistan to fight the holy war. Unheard of just a few months ago, now in control of a third of the country and still totally unseen by the outside world. First of all, we wish from him that he should be a Muslim. Then we will know with each other about the rule, why we staff the taking picture in TV. This is first of all. Kandahar was once one of the most graceful cities in Central Asia. When the Russians were defeated, the area descended into the control of an even more brutal force. Dozens of rival warlords, many of them little more than thieves and murderers. A few months ago, in one of the most remarkable events in 15 years of war, bands of Taliban students, virtually unarmed, defeated them all and delivered a holy vengeance. And as Renild was in Kandahar as the Taliban advanced. When we drove out, we saw, we counted six bodies along the road, and a number of these bodies had, uh, uh, one was, uh, they had bent the arms uh, up of, uh, in the air of this uh, dead man and uh, stuffed playing cards uh, in his hands. And so the dead body was, it was quite absurd actually to see this fellow laying there with the playing cards in, in his hands and uh, another body had stuffed money in his hand and um, simply indicate these are infidels. Uh, it was it was quite, uh, yeah, actually it's quite disgusting. Huh? Uh, the Taliban executed the worst of the previous commanders and strung up their riddled bodies for all to see. A similar fate awaited the city's television sets a fitting symbol of the Taliban's total prohibition on filming any living thing, human or animal. Understandably, the news coverage of the Taliban has been limited. The people of Kandahar shed few tears for the end of the previous anarchy, but now questions are being asked and left unanswered about who the Taliban are and what type of society they wish to create. I joined print journalist Ahmad Rashid in a journey into Kandahar to put these questions to the Taliban leadership. Um, you know, the, the problem with the Taliban, many people do propaganda yeah. against the Taliban because you are hiding all the time. Yeah. You don't allow TV. Yeah. You don't uh, announce your central yeah. structure. Yeah. You are hiding behind some parda. Yeah all the time, yes. yeah. you know. Yeah. So many people are very suspicious. Yeah. You understand yeah, suspicious? Yeah, 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 yeah. Many people are very suspicious. Yeah. Okay, what is this Taliban? Yeah. There's no leader, there's no pictures, there's no speech, yeah. there's no policy statement. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. I mean, you ask the... So many people are very, very suspicious. Information from the senior Taliban is almost non-existent and negotiations are excruciating. It was agreed that we could represent Muhammad Wakil with a shot of a window and a pair of shoes. But even this arrangement created tension amongst other Taliban leaders. He says he's going to discuss with the school whether we, uh, you know, he's the headmaster. Yes, huh? headmaster. After trying to negotiate to film at a local school, our camera was knocked to the ground and smashed. We tracked down the last home video camera in Kandahar to continue shooting. Yesterday, yesterday we could film buildings. Today we can't film anything at all. Uh, we can't have any interviews. We... <laughs> it's an amazing situation. I've never been in a reporting situation like this in my life. 
What would happen if uh, we started filming? <laughs> We'd probably get shot. <laughs> By now, all the filming rights had been totally withdrawn and we were forced to continue with the camera concealed. And, um, did you... The background of this Taliban official is typical of his fellow soldiers. Afghani, exiled into Pakistan as a boy and, before the events of this year, studying to become a Muslim scholar. Yeah. During the study, we left our books and we start to fully jihad, fully fight against cruel people. Yeah. Did you all leave? Did all the students uh, leave in your year? Yes, all uh, the students left their study. And they want to give rescue to the poor people from this fire. The Taliban uprising began in October last year. Within weeks, that overrun the roads of southeast Afghanistan, sweeping away dozens of criminal gangs and local commanders. By January, they'd captured Kandahar. In a way, the rise of the Taliban um, to power in Afghanistan and, 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 and uh, the reason for them to take so quickly in a, in a, in a period of six months, almost um, uh, 10 to 12 provinces in Afghanistan, is because the common man was so sick and tired of what was going on before the Taliban in, in, in these provinces, especially in Kandahar. And uh, it was that that uh, enabled the Taliban to take over without any strong resistance. The aura, you could say, that the, the, the charisma which was uh, 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 related to this movement, being religious students, actually made a lot of people uh, hesitate to shoot at them. The other time, the most poor water, the dim, the Hazos, the Hapawakla, the deep Hazos, the most rotier, the Lulan, the dish, Pawasio, Paradigi, so many, the Rasia, or the Willy was a most cure, the Tulpicula, no. No, the Mercer of Malunda, the Equatic, the Equat, the Simmer Pawalik, the Mercer Chisha, Sara, or Numu to a pact, the Lulu Salad, the Mercer. The Afghanistan. They also had the power of money. The Taliban have been collecting taxes and huge donations from businesses, mostly in Pakistan, who are eager to exploit the prospect of a safe and open road into Central Asia. The Afghan businessmen helped them. A great number of Afghan educated also were very happy with this. I've heard people from Europe and America, the Afghans who lived there, who. who initially didn't know what, who they were, what they were. And when they heard that they had brought some degree of stability and peace and security, they all supported them. They had a good cause. So good cause had to be supported. Mm. There is some reluctance amongst humanitarian agencies to see the Taliban as a good cause, but the safety and security they have brought is extremely welcome. Mine clearing operations have expanded in an attempt to slow the tragedies caused by the millions of mines which litter the area. Enfijar! 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 Emergency medical and food relief is starting to flow into Kandahar to help the needy, but there is still a feeling of uncertainty about the Taliban. What do you need? What do you need now from the world? We need everything. Our government is destroyed for 20 years. Yeah. Everything is destroyed. We don't have anything. Yeah. I think you also see the shelter are destroyed. The road is need to repair. Yeah. Electric city, no telephone, mm -hmm. and no water supply. Yeah. So you need everything. Yeah, but but why don't shouldn't you go out to the world and ask for go to the United Nations in New York? This by Ularzi the the bandi or or two is more than that. But what are the steps that we can take? Much is not enough. Ularzi, much is not enough. Every time we go to the world, we don't have enough money to survive. We don't till. The Taliban ask no one and answer to no one, an attitude which is making neighbouring countries and international organisations extremely cautious, a caution 
that's reinforced by the Taliban's strict adherence to the most rigid Islamic principles. Many people say yes. that you, you, your Islamic system yes. is very hard, yeah. very harsh. Yeah. You don't allow uh, filming, mm. you don't like football, yeah. you don't allow women in the yeah. street. Yeah. Um, how will the uh, many Afghan people who live in Kabul and in other big cities don't like the system, the Taliban system? دا مش خپل شخصي تنزل نه پدې تحمل او بلکې دا د اسلام دین د هغه ډیر پر ازادار دی او مش ته چې ول فوټبال فوټبال مش کله نه بندو هغه لوبې دي دا رقم نور شان چې په اسلام کې بندي هغه مش بندو یا ان دی بیگینینګ دی دی کیم ان اند دین دی بانډ اول کاینډز اف گیمز ایکسپټ فروم ټریډیشنل گیمز لایک ریسلینګ د سلو ریسلینګ گوینګ اون ان لیټرلی ان ان کندها اند they banned uh, playing cards, uh, music and so on. And football included volleyball, a lot of sports has been always, uh, it's, you see all, everybody was playing volleyball for instance. Women? Not women. Uh, well, what uh, what's happened with yeah, women? The, the women, uh, they uh, actually banned women from, from moving around too much in the public, not going to the bazaar, stay at home. and uh, But uh, that's almost created a, an uproar. Of all the restrictions that the Taliban have imposed, it is women who have felt them most sharply. After protests, women were allowed limited access to the streets and the bazaar, but are still totally prohibited from work and education. Rachel Tuprell, a nurse, was reluctantly permitted entry into Kandahar because male medical staff were prohibited from attending to women, and local women were prohibited from working in the medical clinics. There is a need to address the problems of women and children um, and because of the culture it is only a woman that can deal with those problems. Um, so from those members of the Shura I've had support and encouragement um, but I think from amongst the whole Shura there's, there's been some controversy, controversy about the presence of a woman in Kandahar. What schools are open? Boys schools and girls schools open? <coughs> Boys schools. schools. Boys schools. Do you plan to open girls schools? Not now. Not, not now. Do you have teachers? Do you have girl teachers, women teachers? Yes, they are in their own houses and the girls are going to their own houses and just study there. Uh, At the house. Yeah, in the houses. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Is that there is no need to come out to the bazaar or to the schools, yeah? Because they are getting their knowledge in the houses. Right, right, right. I From the mothers and... From one woman she teaches to the girls. Yeah. In every street. And what do they, uh, what do they teach? Do they learn religion and... Religion. Yeah. yeah, religion. These questions came to an abrupt end when we feared that our camera had been sighted. So should we go? In many respects, in spite of the constraints on women and as I say they've become more flexible now um, the, the, the feeling you get from people is that to an extent that, that they're happy um, that the Taliban have come prior to the Taliban being here um, there was a lot of fighting on the streets most people were armed people didn't have freedom can we stop sorry but the chocada should not be here please yeah, sorry can you our interview had to be postponed when a Taliban spy eager to inform upon Rachel's activities, entered her courtyard. The authority of the Taliban hangs heavily over all who live in Kandahar. employed by the authorities, so... Right. Yeah. Right, watch on. Can you please tell them uh, we are journalists, uh, my friend is from Australia, I am from Pakistan yeah. and we are very happy to be here. We would like to see how the Taliban, we've heard so much about the Taliban system, 
The Taliban's harsh interpretation of Islam isn't just imposed upon thieves and murderers. Their authority in all matters is total. Hafizullah Khan was a very prominent figure in Kandahar. He assisted the Taliban with money and food and arms when their uprising began. Although a devout Muslim, he now feels totally excluded by the control of a religious clique. It is becoming a common fear that the political structure in South Afghanistan will not necessarily be Afghan or even Islam. It will just be Taliban. Now that there is peace, the next step will be asking for education, asking for uh, uh, the liberties of life of, of modern world that's required, asking for political participation, that must come, and the Taliban have to give that. The Taliban consistently refuse to address the question of any political involvement for those beyond their own circle. There are many things which belongs to the central government. Yes. Suppose our central central is Kabul. Yes. Whenever we keep each other Kabul, yes. there is a lot of problem will be solved. Right. It is increasingly unlikely that these questions will ever be answered, as their ambition to take over the central government in Kabul now appears impossible. Their attempts to capture Kabul have been soundly rebuffed by President Rabani and his veteran general, Masood. The first setbacks they had was actually when they knocked on the doors of Kabul and uh, confronted uh, uh, Rabani and Masood, in, in, who was in control in, in Kabul. Then uh, they were confronting a professional, more or less, uh, a much more professional army. And that uh, uh, was a setback. And it's simply because uh, religious charisma doesn't work uh, in these areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have this uh, reluctance in, in, in these areas to pull the trigger, and uh, that has been difficult for them. In March, emboldened by their easy victories in the south, and bolstered with captured arms, the Taliban made a bold move to capture the rest of Afghanistan. They fought their way to the very edge of Kabul and swept out towards the government-controlled areas in the west, this time destroying armies along the way with Kalashnikovs rather than the Quran. But when they reached the government lines, their forces were no match against the battalions of tanks and the constant airstrikes which they endured. Away from the watchful eyes of their leaders, these injured soldiers had no objection to being filmed. Unlike the former commanders of Kandahar, the government forces which they have attacked are not criminals. They're far from perfect, but they're not murderers and they're not thieves. I asked this man why they should be attacked. The Taliban casualties have been horrific, but their conviction has yet to fail them. Their ambitions for complete military victory appear to have turned to dust. It's likely that the Taliban will have to be content with controlling a third of the country in their ethnic strongholds in the south. The current stalemate could remain for years.
The keenest observers of recent events are the millions of Afghan refugees in Pakistan and Iran who cling to the hope of being able to return to their homes. For these refugees in Pakistan, the Taliban are no longer just an advancing army. They are the government in the southeast. But little is known about what sort of government they will be, one that involves them or one that is controlled exclusively by an extreme religious clique. For many, rumours and wishful thinking are not a sufficient basis to risk returning. <laughs>